guys, it's Nick with Smith Board Strength and Conditioning. We're here with another video today to talk about bracing. So most people have seen something along these lines like a belt. And so today we're gonna talk about bracing into one of these belts. Now, most people have this misconception that if you wear a belt, that all of a sudden you're gonna be protected and that couldn't be further from the truth. So today I'm gonna kinda of give you guys a basic introduction and what bracing is and how to use it to implement and maximize the efforts of your belt. So I got two different types of belts here. I got a, a regular two-pronged belt and a lever belt. Um, both of them I use at different parts of uh, my training. Um, I kind of switched over to a lever belt recently with competition because the USAPL has strict standards on what belts are allowed. So that's why I picked one of these up because it follows under their IPF regulations. So anyway, kind of switched to a lever belt. Um, but in regards to your weightlifting, it's all kind of based on preference. Um, but ultimately, it's not the type of belt that you get, but ultimately how you use it. So to give you a basic foundation of how to properly brace, uh, most people have... Um, I hear, you know, when they talk about like, oh, you know, you're going to tighten up like you're going to get punched in the stomach, which is sort of true. Um, if you're preparing yourself, what you're trying to do ultimately is create intra-abdominal pressure. So the intra-abdominal pressure that you create with the abdominal muscles that you have, you know, surrounding your entire stomach, both in the front and the back, are supposed to give your back protection. So... Unfortunately, most of the time when people brace, they actually intend to actually kind of like draw in their stomach. Um, some people kind of use the hollowing technique. And um, research as of late is kind of showing that actual bracing, meaning you're kind of expanding in a way, um, is the preferred way to uh, protect your spine during activities, whether it's something as simple as bed mobility, or something is, you know, deadlifting 500 pounds, whatever it may be. So I wanna give you guys just a basic um, idea of what to kind of cue into when you are bracing, when you're practicing your breathing before a heavy set, um, or even if you're just trying to get into the routine of um, protecting your back during even simple exercises like bicep curls or lat pull downs, whatever it may be. Now, in preparation for bracing, what we really focus on is what we call a diaphragmatic breathing. So if you think of your muscles of your abdominal cavity as like a can of soda or like a cylinder, what you're trying to do is create equal amount of pressure all the way around the cylinder. So you're not just focusing on your six pack muscles, or the paraspinals of your back, but you're trying to breathe and fill everything in the cylinder from front to back versus drawing in or hollowing. So by implementing a full filling effect where you create that intra-abdominal pressure, that allows you to use an external cue, some proprioception like a weight belt and be able to optimize that even more. So you have something to kind of press up against and that gives your back that added support. So basically to kind of get this started to use this type of breathing, what you ultimately want to do is make sure that you're breathing and when you inhale that you actually have more excursion coming from your belly than you do from your chest. You guys have all sprinted before if you're really tired, when you're tired you kind of and you use a lot of these accessory muscles of your chest. And really when you're preparing for something like a strenuous load, whether you're moving furniture or a deadlift or a heavy squat, you actually want to fill from your belly and your chest should be relatively quiet. So when you're breathing, it should look something like this. So if you put your hands on your belly like so, and when you take a deep breath in, you can see kind of the excursion, you can see kind of the excursion of my stomach. And that's kind of what you're looking for when preparing. So. The way I kind of practice this or I tell patients um, when they're preparing for something like this is just to go around and try it in any pot potential scenario. So whether you're trying it laying down, whether you're trying it sitting up, standing, whatever may you, you may do, you know, practice both ways. 
Now, that might go against everything you've probably ever been taught before or what your natural breathing pattern is. Um, you'll notice that in most cases when people breathe in, they're trying to, um, they're trying to brace, they tend to suck it in, you know. Um, where oftentimes you know, oh, look skinny, you know, and this kind of makes you look like you have a beer belly. And if you look like you have a beer belly, you're doing it correctly. Um, so this isn't something that you can master overnight. Uh, this video, along with my, even my interpretation of it, this is, uh, this is a very novice explanation of it. Um, there are people far more qualified to teach it, but this is just something that I can kind of explain and apply to an athlete and I'm trying to give it uh, in the most basic foundation possible. So when practicing this, do it anytime you have an opportunity. You're breathing all day, hopefully, and um, continue to breathe, but practice trying it this way so it feels more comfortable. If you feel like your stomach is kind of shaky and it's not smooth, that's normal. Your muscles are kind of, you know, the lights are finally turning on. You're starting to recruit these muscles that you haven't recruited in the past and they're starting to kind of, you know, they've been on holiday and kind of hanging out, and um, now they're starting to wake up. So I would practice this type of breathing as much as possible, even before you start the bracing technique portion of it. But the next step to this is, in fact, the bracing portion. So when you breathe in, you're filling all the way around the full cylinder, and then you want to maximize the amount of tension all the way around that. And the way that I practice this and the way I show this to my patients or my athletes is to kind of put your fingers in the front and the back, kind of like you're holding a sandwich, but the sandwich is your torso. So it's gonna look something like this. Your hands are gonna be in this position. So if I'm filling through my stomach, or from the side so you guys can see it a little better. Now, when I breathe, I want you to pay attention to the distance of my hands. So when I breathe in and tighten, it's a very small movement, maybe like this much, but I'm actually pressing into my hands and expanding. So it should kind of look like, and by doing that, I can fill and I can feel that the front and the back through kind of the, the curve or the lateral portion of my stomach is getting the maximum amount of contraction. So we're getting, my obliques are kicking in, my transverse abdominis is starting to kick in, and that's how you know that you're bracing kind of all the way around. Here's the fun part. I've got my belt on now, and I kind of want to show you what it looks like in preparation. I'm gonna use my barbell behind me to kind of prep for a squat. Now, when putting on the tightness of a belt, you want to have a little bit of room just to be able to push into that belt. You don't want it so tight that you can suffocate and you can't get a full breath. You should feel like you should be able to take a maximal breath and really push into that so you have a little bit of a gap. Now, I'm pretty it's pretty snug in here, but I feel like I can fill this and really press on it, okay? So it should look something like this. So if you're breathing out and then tightening, you kind of see that little bit of a shift and I feel like everything is pressing out. I have, I feel the tension from the belt actually all the way around. So if I were to get a barbell on my back, I breathe in to prepare, tighten, you can breathe out on the way up but I'm keeping that tension all the way through. As mentioned before, you don't need to do a back squat in order to, you know, to brace. You can use these for very real world applications like lifting furniture, lifting the hamper. Uh, anytime you're about to prepare yourself to put your back under stress, this is a way that you can protect yourself um, in order to prevent future injury or, you know, if you have a nagging one, this is a way to kind of protect yourself from re-injuring it even further. So I hope this, uh, this little tutorial was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions at all, go seek a PT who specializes in, the, specializes in this stuff. I by no means a master of this. I am uh, not an instructor. These are just tools that I've been taught that I can kind of pass on to my patients. And uh, if you guys have any questions at all, feel free to contact me. If there's anything I can do to help out, um, please let me know. And uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.